take the fantastic advances in therapeutics and rheumatology, make it an exciting area of medicine to work in where you can see dramatic quality of life improvement for our patients in rheumatology. What do you think of when someone mentions the specialty rheumatology? Well, in all honesty, I kind of cringe a little bit. And I think ah, that just sounds like a whole lot of chronic, frustrating conditions that don't really improve much and that have a lot of vague symptoms and you never really figure out what's going on. I know that's probably very unfair and way off base. And I know that my guest today would disagree with that. She's worked in rheumatology for over 10 years and she absolutely loves it. She's going to tell us all about the specialty, what she does, if she does any procedures, and what the good and the bad is about the specialty. Hi, it's Michelle with The Medicine Couch. Thank you so much for joining me today. On this channel, I love to explore all of the possibilities open in medicine for PAs and NPs, including exploring the various medical specialties, cool and unusual jobs open to PAs and NPs, and non-clinical jobs that we can transition into. So if you like the work that I do, then please support the channel by hitting that subscribe button, share my videos with colleagues who may find them interesting, and if you feel like it, give me a super thanks down below in the chat. Now let's dive in and hear about this specialty and see what I'm missing, see what she thinks is so great about rheumatology. Hello, my name is Heather. I'm a physician assistant, been practicing for 12 years as a PA. So we are going to talk about rheumatology. And is that a specialty that you've worked in throughout your whole career or what's kind of been your path since graduation? I didn't start in rheumatology. I actually started in underserved primary care. I guess you could say rural family medicine and then worked there for a couple of years and ultimately transitioned into rheumatology 10 years ago. Honestly, um, responded to a job ad and, and landed in a rheumatology office. I had not had it on my radar. I'd not had any rotations in rheumatology as a PA student, but I'm very thankful that I happened to respond to that job posting because I've stayed in the in the field for 10 years. I talked to so many people on this channel who ended up in a specialty that they didn't really ever think was going to be anything they did or like you said, even on their radar. So for those people who are watching, just keep an open mind because you'll never know what specialty you might click with, right? Absolutely. Okay, so when you work in rheumatology outpatient offices, typical kind of family practice hours? Generally, yes. I like to think of it as a very family-friendly, low-key day. Just to give an idea, typically the hours are between 8 to 5 outpatient. My current uh, setting is I, I start seeing patients at 8.30, have an hour for lunch, and then I leave office between 4.30 and 5.00. I know some uh, rheumatology APPs that actually have structured a, you know, less than full-time equivalent job where they're working mornings only, or they may work four days a week. I would say it is a specialty where that is a distinct option. Um, lots of folks are open to a four-day-a-week opportunity or even part-time. For you in general, through the years working in rheumatology, how many patients would you say on average are most people in rheumatology seeing every day? Again, yes, this varies greatly. It's varied for me between private practice locations, but in general, I would say between 16 to 18 patients per day. For follow-up patients at the practice I'm at currently, I see less. I see one or two new patients a day and 10 to 12 follow-up patients, but that is uh, definitely heavily determined by your practice setting. I know APPs in a rheumatology um, for-profit or academic center where they may see 20 to 25 patients a day. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely very variable. So when patients get referred to your practice, do they see either you or the physician? And it just kind of depends on who they get put on the schedule with, or do you only do follow-ups? What, how is that usually set up? So that is typically offered to the patient as a choice. My wait time to be seen as a new patient is two to three weeks versus six to eight weeks for the physicians that I work with. So many patients are are choosing to be seen sooner. There's also the understanding that in our office currently, I may see a patient at a new consult at the second or third follow-up visit. They will also meet one of my collaborating physicians. I have not, and I prefer not to see new 
pregnant patients with rheumatic disease or brand new patients with uh, Wegener's granulomatosis or other severe vasculitis type conditions, I feel like they may need to see the rheumatologist at their initial initial consult. You mentioned a few types of conditions that you see in rheumatology, and we're going to talk a little bit in a minute about any procedures you might do, but can can you kind of just list through the top different things that you see? I would say the bread and butter, so to speak, of rheumatology is rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, or any of the spondyloarthropathy conditions of inflammatory back pain. We have patients with lupus. We see quite a few patients for bone health uh, and osteoporosis treatment. We see patients that are diagnosed with polymyalgia, rheumatica, as well as giant cell arteritis. And then we see many, many patients for osteoarthritis as a secondary condition uh, on top of a rheumatic disease. And then we also have patients that have what we call reactive arthritis, whether it's uh, reactive arthritis to an infection process or something entirely different. And then we see many, many patients where uh, they have what we call mixed connective tissue disorder, or they may have a smattering of abnormal rheumatologic antibodies, and we can't give them a classic textbook definition of lupus or RA, but we go on to follow them and we call them unspecified connective tissue disorder. Oh, and gout. Can't forget gout. When I hear rheumatology, I, you know, it's just like, oh, God, that just sounds like a beat down every day. <laughs> um, but I've never had a rotation in rheumatology and I've never spent time like in rheumatology. So, so tell us what kind of misconceptions people may have about it or what there is to really love about the specialty. Sure. So I think the first misconception that I hear about a lot and I want to clear up is that there's a big mystery around rheumatic diseases. And when I sit down and explain rheumatology to somebody, it's nice because you have all these clinical guidelines where you can learn what is the way we officially can diagnose lupus or RA. And if you don't meet the criteria, then you need to keep looking. And I view it as a real positive for the field that there is quite a bit of detective work to do. So if you don't like solving a puzzle, it's not the field for you. But if you enjoy the intellectual challenge of learning about all different types of serologic testing and antibodies and putting pieces of multiple organ system involvement together in the same diagnosis, I feel like that's a real plus to the field. I think that one of the drawing points to it for me has been the ability to follow patients chronically over time and establish those long-term relationships with patients if that's something that you enjoy. For example, I've seen patients in the same clinic for six or seven years, and in that time period, um, we've had an opportunity to see their siblings or their children, because many of the rheumatic diseases have a genetic component to them. Um, one of the things that I feel is a positive is because rheumatic disease can affect every organ system, I feel like my internal medicine skill set is constantly being utilized. And I like that it keeps me fresh in the knowledge base and then maintaining those skills. The other thing I really enjoy about rheumatology is I consider it to be low stress and not a lot of urgent or emergent issues coming into clinic. I've had a few, but not many. And I think that the work-life balance is excellent. It's a, it's a specialty where you can go to work and go home to your family. For example, I don't bring a lot of work home with me at all after hours or on the weekend. I think also the flexibility to do other things with your career in rheumatology. We can touch on that a little more later, but there's real potential to create a space for yourself to be a rheumatology inboxologist. I know several PAs working in that kind of a setting where they're they're handling calls and, and different things from an administrative standpoint or even telemedicine. I know several practices that do a huge amount of telemedicine in the rheumatology space. So the, the inbox, does that start to be a little overwhelming in rheumatology? We do have quite a bit of lab monitoring that we are following up on and also imaging uh, results to follow on. And then I would say there's a huge amount of administrative behind the scenes work that goes on from a prior authorization standpoint because of the specialized medications that we're using. And then also from a, a scheduling standpoint for infusions and other things. So I think there's a, a huge amount of behind the scenes administrative work that goes on that takes up a, a part of the day, but I would say I spend about 20 to 25% of my, my day making follow-up calls or doing 
administrative type things when I'm not directly in front of a patient. How do you do that when you're seeing 18 to 22 patients a day? How do you get that stuff done? I just, that's what floors me. And I, I think would probably stymie a lot of people thinking about this specialty. It can be a hard row when you're working five days a week and seeing 18 to 20 patients a day. However, if you can negotiate or set up an expectation that, you know what, if I'm seeing 18 patients a day, I will require a half day of admin time per week to complete all of these things. Or in my case, I choose to work 0.8 full-time equivalent or four days out of five. So I may spend 30 minutes to an hour from home reviewing labs and messages um, just to delegate to medical assistants on my day, quote unquote, out of office. Um, and then I also have designated time built into my four day a week schedule where I have 30 to 40 minutes over the lunch hour after I've finished eating or an hour at the end of the day. I see my last patient at 3.30 and they're out of the office by four. So I have an hour at the end of the day where I have built in administrative time. So it's possible, but you yeah. may have to fight for it. So that's a, that's a good tip if you are looking to get into rheumatology or if you're interviewing, you, you really need to probably make sure that's clarified as what what you get for admin time because there's going to be a part of it. So let's talk a little bit more about other challenges people should think about if they're looking at this specialty. Rheumatology in general tends to be on the lower to average side of paid salary for an outpatient internal medicine subspecialty. For example, I think a starting salary for a a PA and nurse practitioner in my region of rheumatology working full-time would be 100 to 110,000 a year. You really need to be aware of that going in. But I think there's something to be said for the non-monetary benefits of it as a specialty. And the pay is not bad, it's just average. There's also a huge uh, variability in onboarding experience. So I think if you're looking for work in rheumatology, recognize that one of the challenges is finding the right office where you're gonna get a good onboarding and good training experience so that that will set you up for satisfaction in the field and hopefully retention in the field of rheumatology. Um, the other drawbacks that I could like I think of would be limited procedures and, and not, not a lot, obviously not a lot of surgical things. Um, so if, if procedures are not your jam <laughs> and you can, you know, master the art of a few joint injections, then rheumatology would be your place. And then I, I do think that one of the challenges that APPs face in rheumatology is that rheumatologists, I love them, but they have been rather slow to adopt APPs, especially in certain regions. So I know when I started working in rheumatology, I'm in a very large metro area in the southern United States, and I was the second APP in the entire 6 million population metro area. So, you know, I was teaching every office I joined how to utilize an APP in rheumatology. So if you don't like helping a physician understand how to utilize your skill set, then you might find challenges in certain regions. Really finding out when you're interviewing what you're stepping into is so important. And like you said, you need to step into the right position. I would definitely recommend speaking not only to like an office manager, but meet the rheumatologist. Ask to meet the rheumatologist that you'll be working with. Discern whether or not they have uh, had APPs in their practice before. Also, I would recommend getting plugged in to the rheumatology community at large. As a specialty, it is a fairly close-knit specialty. And so if you can find a local rheumatology journal club or even a group of APPs working in rheumatology in your state, they'll know. They will know and they may tell you uh, on a personal communication basis which practices are well reputed in terms of their retention and uh, treatment of APPs. And they'll tell you also which practices may not be the best opportunity for someone new to the field. So I would, I would utilize your networking skills. You can gain a lot of information about a practice without stepping foot inside. What kind of personalities do you think do well in rheumatology? I think that a personality where you have a lot of warm interest in listening to people. Uh, I think also a personality who does well with managing, like I said, chronic comorbidities and chronic conditions. If you're an adrenaline junkie, Rheumatology probably ain't for you, <laughs> but I, I think it's rewarding if you enjoy seeing a good clinical change over time uh, and then 
you know, also if you enjoy helping patients manage some mental health conditions that go oftentimes hand in hand, depression, anxiety, insomnia. So I think if you have an interest in um, psychiatry in some sense, at least managing anxiety, depression, then rheumatology is a, is a great fit because you are dealing with quite a few patients that have those coexisting. You had mentioned before that you felt that there were some some opportunities to kind of branch out once you have been in rheumatology for a while and do something a, a little bit different. What are some of those opportunities you were talking about? Once you gain experience in the field and you're utilizing a lot of the specialty medications that we use in rheumatology and you're gaining proficiency and talking about them, it's quite doable to gain a spot on a speaker's panel or speaker's bureau from a pharmaceutical industry standpoint and, and build those relationships with our pharma colleagues. I've had several friends go on to work in industry as a medical science liaison or a thought leader liaison for uh, pharmaceutical companies. I think that many folks in rheumatology have an opportunity to participate in clinical research. So not at my current position, but at my first rheumatology position, I was able to become a sub-investigator and participate in several clinical research trials. I think there are a lot of opportunities for part-time work or even, let's say, 0.75, or as I mentioned, I'm 0.8 full-time equivalent. Also, there's a lot of opportunities to precept students, and I think use precepting as a potential opportunity to do consulting or, or part-time adjunct faculty work. And I think last on my list would be opportunities to supplement income by doing other um, contract work. I've done some work with nonprofits in the realm of like the Psoriasis Foundation or Osteoporosis Foundation or Lupus Foundation, where you can get involved in patient education campaigns or advocacy roles, and then also medical surveys. Because of the field of rheumatology and all the advances in the biologic world, yeah. there's there's a great opportunity to do um, online or Zoom or even in-person um, medical surveys or interviews where they want to know about your prescribing habits and your thoughts on up and coming therapeutics in the rheumatology world. And I think for example, last year I, I took a lot of surveys and I think I earned four or five thousand dollars just doing surveys. Um, so what I'm saying there's a there's a big opportunity there. It's all 1099 income, but those really do add up. Yeah, I never qualify for those because I work sporadic locums in occupational medicine mostly. So if somebody is a PA or an NP and they're already working in another specialty and they're thinking about moving to rheumatology or if they're getting ready to graduate, what are some of the ways people could prepare themselves to be a good candidate to get hired into rheumatology? From a student perspective, if you are interested in the area of rheumatology and you don't have a rheumatology elective rotation available, I would say the best approach would be to take very seriously your internal medicine rotation or family medicine rotation and get a good background skill set in, in that internal medicine way. Also looking at rotations in pulmonology, cardiology, dermatology, even orthopedics, and also gastroenterology. We see a lot of overlap in those fields with the field of rheumatology. So gaining experience in those other settings would be very helpful to you. And then I think if you have some way to get some hands-on experience with joint injections, um, that would also be a great asset. What about things like resources, any books, anything special like that that you would recommend? My favorite two text resources would have to be Rheumatology Secrets by Sterling West and then also Primer on Rheumatic Disease by John Klippel. There are several rheumatology societies that I think are the best resource for APPs in the field. I am biased. I'm on the board of directors for Rheumatology Advanced Practice Providers. So oh. RAP is the national organization whose mission it is, is to educate and form a community and networking um, capacity for our, our APPs in rheumatology. We have a website, www.rapp.org. We also have an app. We have a podcast called RAPcast. We have a national conference geared towards APPs in the field of rheumatology, but delivered by APPs in the field of rheumatology. And then we have several regional smaller CME conferences, and we're building a network of, of regional groups of APPs in different zones in the United States. So I would encourage you to get involved with RAP. One of the other organizations that is extremely helpful is American College of Rheumatology. If you pay a nominal registration fee, 
you'll have access to all of the uh, disease diagnosis and treatment guidelines that I think are mm -hmm. a huge resource for those, especially new in the field. And then there's an image library for really interesting uh, radiographic information or even dermatologic things. There are state rheumatology societies that I would encourage everyone to join and participate in. So if, you, if you're in the state and you want to be working in the field of rheumatology, a great place to go and network for a job is to go to that state conference. And there's a journal uh, of rheumatology. It's called www.jroom.org slash meetings. Well, actually, you can find a list of all of the in-person CME conferences in the country for rheumatology, which is quite extensive, actually. So what about people just coming out of school, new graduates? Is this a specialty that you think is, is really good for new graduates, or is it better they get some experience somewhere else first and then come into rheumatology? If possible, to gain a couple of years experience in primary care or internal medicine, I think that would set you up for an excellent knowledge base moving into rheumatology. But I do know that I've had several new graduates, PAs, nurse practitioners in my area find a home in rheumatology and love it. So it's definitely a specialty where people are willing and accepted as new graduates. Okay, so anything else that you want to say that might you know, convince or influence somebody to consider rheumatology as their specialty? Yes, so I think if you are interested in a field where you can have a low-key, family-friendly, day-to-day, um, -day interesting job, you could consider rheumatology. It is considered somewhat of a zebra of medical specialties, but I find it intellectually challenging. I find the minimal number of joint injection procedures that I do to satisfy my desire to do hands-on procedural things. I think that rheumatology is a great area of medicine to be in if you like following patients with chronic conditions, if you like building relationships with patients, I think the fantastic advances in therapeutics and rheumatology make it an exciting area of medicine to work in where you can see dramatic quality of life improvement for our patients in rheumatology. And I think also that if you're looking to craft a career in medicine where there's flexibility, either to work part-time clinically with additional contracting work on the side, or even eventually move into a pharmaceutical role such as MSL, the field of rheumatology is a really good uh, launching pad into those alternative roles. Thank you so much, Heather, for telling us all about rheumatology. Thank you so much for having me, Michelle. It was a pleasure. If after watching this, rheumatology still isn't the specialty that you're looking for and you want to learn more about other specialties, then you can watch this specialties playlist here. And also go to my main channel page to look at all the other different playlists I have available. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And as always, take care, stay sane, and I'll see you next time on The Medicine Couch. Bye.